had to listen to the end of this song because it's a very beautiful song and uh, now we are back thank you very much for still being with us to our two years anniversary kingdom come deliverance stream i had the glorious idea to have amazing guests and my next guests are as amazing as Pierre was in the beginning, I have... More amazing. More amazing. Okay. Well, he set the bar pretty high, so now yeah. it's up on you It's only up from here. <laughs> <laughs> can go only, go, only go upwards from here. Uh, I have with me Jan Rücker, uh, QA lead, and Martin Siegler, part of the scripting department. And I named this part KCD Bucks Galore. Actually... I read on the internet that KCD was somewhat buggy in the beginning of on release, but I don't believe some some f foolish things like that. I don't think that bugs were ever a reason, a, a, a issue at all. It's fake news. It's it's fake news. But yeah. uh, maybe Martin, uh, well, with Honza, with Jan, I'm streaming relatively often Kingdom Come Deliverance, so people might know you already. But Ziggy, we had also quite some fun story together. We were traveling back in the days with with the beta of kingdom come deliverance but maybe good times good times good can times. you can you say what what you do who you are what's the scripting department in a few words for sure for sure yeah. so uh i guess i'm a technical designer but i do a lot of different things so technical designer for us uh, is another word for uh, what's uh or somewhere perhaps called scripting Essentially what we do is lightweight programming, which is mostly oriented uh, on quests and the content of the game. So we use the low level tools from the programmers. So that means our engine or the other uh, backend tools that we have, like Scala and something similar to the modding tools uh, that we have uh, released to actually implement the content for the game, which the designers uh, came up with and, and had written. And uh, that ranges from quests and sort of these uh, story like assets to mechanics such as RPG and behavior of uh, the NPCs. So your world. team is also responsible for stealth, for stealth mechanics and so on. I can remember, so we, you, when did you start at Warhol Studios? It's a pretty long time back, right? It's we, uh, more than five years now. It's, uh, did uh, you, it's you started also in 2014, right? So we started, we, we the, started uh, the same a month, day. Yeah, yeah, a month ago. A month a, okay, yeah, yeah. so we, bo Ziggy and me, how <laughs> we, we how he lost. <laughs> we are veterans of the team, actually, which no, is interesting. Yeah, are people we came at a time where we had 20-ish people and we stocked up to 40 yeah. at that time. So for example, in the scripting department, yeah. I was, the, I think, either sixth or seventh person mm -hmm. that came on board and uh, we were about 23 people at mm. the moment or Honza or Jan, um, yeah. you need to know that you pronounce Jan in Czech Republic sometimes as Honza. No one really knows why, but yeah. it's, it's a dogma. That's you do it. Or you can call me Jonathan. Jo oh, Jonathan. <laughs> okay, Jonathan. <laughs> no, no, please don't. Just, just remind the people what's your deal here at War Studios. Yeah, when did you start? What's my deal? Yeah. Like, Many reminds me I don't really know. Now, no, to be honest, I, I lead a, a quality assurance team here in Warhol Studios. I actually started, it's almost three years ago. I'm not that veteran as those But, guys. Um, I actually started as a half college dropout in the, as the, as the, <laughs> as a tester here. You started here in, as a failure? <laughs> yeah. And, it's I, up, and, it's and from that part, up it's from here. all the time failure. No, no, I, was, I actually started when I was on the university and, and It wasn't going great, <laughs> and so I started as a as a tester uh, said, here in Warhol Studios said, for K KCD. And screw university! Yeah. I'll become a <laughs> video game tester. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> Ziggy, there's uh, one guy here called Razor Fist, and he said you guys put a pretty good stealth system together in the game. Ever thought of doing a full stealth title? Well, the second part of it, no. But uh, the first part, <laughs> stealth system. There so anything? hey, Razor Fist, thanks for enjoying our uh, stealth system. I'm glad that you enjoy it. Uh, uh, well, the thing about our stealth system is that it's uh, KCD is not a stealth game in its essence, right? It's a story-driven open-world RPG. So stealth is, is obviously one of the ways that we want you to be I able to approach the game, but it's only a small part of it, only just one aspect. So I think that's also what makes us interesting, that you actually play a stealth that's much less artificial than, for example, games that are very, very um, sort of uh, explicit in, in showing you all the icons and, and the hood. 
hard things uh, and, and sort of maybe being a little too oriented for stealth and, and, and sort of uh, not really believable in how people do. Uh, we have a world where people actually behave in not regarding really uh, that we want you to be able to play uh, a stealth gameplay and then we have to integrate stealth onto that. Mm. But we tried our best and I, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with Pretty big open world, so that's true. We have a huge open world, which leads to uh, some bugs here and there. Honza, what went wrong? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like to, 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 be, to be completely honest, I don't think like there is like a thing that went wrong. You know, when you have big open world games, when when the NPCs are act like they are living actually in the world, right? And that means that they are choosing what they're gonna do and. They are in the, in the situation that you can't predict. So, I don't think there is like something we did really badly. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at the end, uh, in, this, in this big world, big, big world RPG that is filled with NPCs with their own lives, on the, the, their own day cycles, and also the quests that are like colliding with these day cycles, something is going to... Mm get wrong really bad sometimes yeah. and you just know it and it's a matter of time and uh, when it happens and also it's a matter of like your ability to find it which is yeah like i said it's really hard to to discover these bugs how would you define a bug what's a uh, well everyone kind of knows what's a bug but what you know what i mean like what's yeah, a bug i know it's a good question so uh, there's definitely different kinds of bugs that we do, so some of them are really obvious and there's no way around them. For example, if you have a uh, fader that the game doesn't come out of or if the game crashes, then that's obviously a bug and that's uh, usually kind of a technical glitch. So perhaps we didn't account for all the occurrences and for everything that uh, could affect some other module from outside or anything like that. So those are the most critical and the most obvious bugs. But then, the, but then there's uh, different kinds of bugs, just such as, for example, feedback from people playing the game and seeing people not react in a way that they would expect. So I entered someone's house and then there was, uh, you know, he, he tried to uh, walk me out of the trespass area and then sort of Mm. When uh, I paid the fine, he was all right, and he left me, you know, mm. walking around his house. Isn't that weird? And so perhaps the NPC is actually doing exactly what we told him. So th it's not really a technical bug per se. Mm. Everything's working fine. We just didn't Actual. thought of the uh, particular scenario that uh, mm. the person is uh, doing in the game. So that's kind of a sort of design bug that we also have to account for. There's but all. Different kinds that's, of that's interesting. This leads to the, the, the next question, which is also uh, was dropped here. Is there any bug that kind of stick to your mind? Something you remember that was either uh, super funny or super hard to come up by? I, I have one bug. I always talk about this bug when someone asks. And with the pigs, you know, there was a spawner of the pigs. And it was like a pyramid of 100 pigs and uh, spawning all the time. So there is like... <laughs> Big pyramid of pigs standing on each other. That was great bug. But I Pick actually <laughs> today we we, we 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 talked about water and 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 physics of water. Mm -hmm. And I I just I just remember the bug when you shot the rabbit or hare uh, close to the water and the hare the dead body of the hare dropped into the water. The the physics, you know, just catapult the, the rabbit out of the water <laughs> for like 100 meters from the water. So uh, it's like, yeah, we need to fix this. But, you know, fixing fixing physical bugs is like, the, they are the worst. Did you, now that, you know I, that you talk about that, did you read by accident uh, Red Dead Redemption Online? They had a weird bug that in their online mode, they are uh, nice the, the, the animals the are starting to rot out in a way because the players are hunting them and they're not spawning in again or something. So it's funny that their world is slowly <laughs> losing all living life in there. Well, that's a Martin, what was the uh, question for you now? I mean, some some of those bugs you have like something. How do you call reproduction rate or something? And that's how we call it, I yeah. think. Mm -hmm. So there's. 
happens to every player, happens to mm -hmm. every thousand player and so on. First of all, how does this work? Mm -hmm. And second, how is there anything, any bug in particular that you can, that you remember that was super hard to find out, but then you did it in a way somehow? All right. Well, uh, the thing that uh, you mean by uh, what we call repo rate is sort of how deterministically the bug happens. So uh, there are bugs where when you figure out what exactly is causing the bug, uh, you have a hundred percent chance that it will, uh, or certainty that it will happen whenever you follow those steps. So for example, when we make uh, a mistake that is uh, in, let's say, a formula, then that formula will always work the same way usually. And so once the QA actually tracks down how to uh, make the bug happen, they can just sort of uh, tell us what the steps that we need to go through are, and when we do them, we do we, we can uh, sort of look at what the game is doing and how the bug is happening in real time, and then usually fix it. Much more difficult case is when the bug is sometimes happening and sometimes not when Let's you think that you are doing bugs. everything the same, and you may actually very well be really doing your best to do everything in the same way. Remember a lot of bugs from. Uh, crime system doing this, for, for example, where all the guards are trying to uh, react to what you're doing and so some of them are trying to arrest you and the others, uh, for example, didn't notice that you already was arrested by another guard and the crime was resolved and, you know, you can pay the fine and the other guy is still beating you to death and you can you can actually surrender to him because there's no crime already and stuff like that. So whenever in crime system a lot of people react to what you're doing, there's a lot of desynchronization happening and a lot of bugs consequently. Uh, coming out of uh, the desynchronization. For example, a really, I, I remember a really nasty bug that we had with a very weird repro that we didn't find until very, very late. It was before releasing our very first public version of the game. And the game... It was the alpha, right? The, the alpha, Samopesh. yeah, yeah the, the first, yeah, yeah, the Samopesh demo. Uh, the game was always crashing whenever... So there were two mini games, right? Lockpicking yeah. and Alchemy. And whenever or not whenever, that, that's the thing, like sometimes when you would play uh, the alchemy, the game would just crash and that was really serious and it was happening quite a lot, but we, it wasn't happening, it, it wasn't happening all the time and we didn't know what it was and it was only happening in some builds of the game. It was caused actually by you first trying to lockpick something mm -hmm. and then playing the alchemy minigame. So whenever you were trying to lockpick something and then you were trying to play the alchemy, the alchemy at one point would crash, but it was dependent on you trying to look something any at, at any point before. Do Dr. Slaver is reminding the famous alchemy bug and as well the one where <laughs> yeah. the alchemy table was catapulting the player. Well, it was not catapulting, but you were starting to levitate and... Yeah, it took us like three patches until we discovered what it's really caused by it. You know, can you was, remember what it was? Was there any uh, like? I am pretty sure that it was that only some of the tables that were in the world were doing this. I think this. it was just once the, the one in the forest. There yeah. was one particular. Or, uh, there was the one in the forest, and the second one it was in Rataya, and it was like a different one. But with this, I don't know. I, I don't really remember. like everybody in the uh, uh, on the streams. Like there was a point, and everybody was flying. We were trying it here all the time. No. It doesn't happen. We are not able to reproduce it here. It was so so. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, I'm almost crying just thinking <laughs> about it. Yeah, it's yeah. like somebody is like reporting it back. It's like this happens all the time. You trying yes. all the ways how to get yes. to the bug, and you are just not able because there is so many variables yes. in the game. And then the 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 answer is some weird connection of. You did this in one save, and because you still have the save, it corrupts all the other saves. Yes, 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 definitely. Those, those bugs are are, are are the worst. You know, it's um, sometimes it happens that one bug causes another other bug, which causing another bug. You know, it's like you are doing a like first day patch or something, and you are able to get one small bug, which is like minor. You know, uh -huh. but after months, you discover that there was like. A extension of the bug, mm. you know, and it happens with the time. If you remember the 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 great bug with the Halbert. with the halberds, yeah, yeah, the halberd bug. Yeah. It was the worst bug we had. When they dropped and it's the like, like, I mean, like infinite. Halberts everywhere. There was a <laughs> lot of people that their game wasn't just. They were not able to play the game because there was so much uh, 
uh, halberds in the in the world, which was like giving you two FPS at the time, and we are not able to like get it. How 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 is it happening here? Mm. And that's the problem because a lot of the people will send you a safe or something, and you just see there is a lot of halberds. Mm. I know. It's crashing because of it. I know it doesn't r run because of it. I know, but why does it happen? Nobody knows. This is the worst bug, actually. I think that was the worst bug <laughs> in the KCD. So there was another question: What bugs left is left in the game? Of course, there's many bugs left in the game, but not nice to look at. But they will not destroy. Yeah, the this game. was actually that you were talking with the dog in the mm. in, in in the in the in the slope, you know. And yeah. <clears throat> I didn't see anything. No. So, uh, <laughs> is there any feature, uh, Jan, that gave you most headaches in the game? Like any in particular? Was it com let's call combat a feature? Was it combat? Was it stealth? In stealth mechanics? Was it the world? Or what? What part of the yeah, game yeah, as a concept yeah, yeah. gave you mm. the most problems? Uh, I, 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 I honestly, there was like, like better. It's to say that. Every feature has it's every like feature problems. is crap. <laughs> no, no, I didn't want to want to like uh, sell it like that. But yeah, uh, there is like not a feature that you will you will say that, that like it's the worst or the worst to like maybe you can you can say you can you can say in a way that combat is really compl uh, complicated for us to test actually mm -hmm. because there is so much combinations you know mm -hmm. you have like two people and let's say that they have same weapon mm -hmm. and after that you have animations which are played which are five different directions mm -hmm. and they can be played in the two stances with the right foot ahead left foot ahead and maybe there is some more like iterations of the of the uh, of the uh, of the animations you know mm -hmm. and it's like when you when you count it down it's like thousand thousands of animations because you have you have like sword against short sword and long sword against long sword and l like a uh, another weapon against another weapon the mm -hmm. long weapons in the game so it's really hard to test it but I wouldn't say like there is like combat is the worst uh, the other features are also hard to test but you know uh, in every in every feature you have like things that are problematic let's mm -hmm. say the problematic part which is like hard to test is almost almost always the interesting part in the game you know it's like uh, how our stealth works, you know? How the NPCs are able to see Henry and how it works with the RPG system. Mm -hmm. It's really, really interesting when you take it and say to the people, you know, you have red on yourself, that means that gives you this amount of uh, some RPG stat, which means you mm -hmm. will be discovered like m much, much faster. Other systems, it works, but it works much differently than you actually designed it, you mm -hmm. know, and that's the problematic part, but I wouldn't say like there's a feature that we hate, like mm -hmm. we hate the horse, you know, <laughs> he's a dick, <laughs> but yeah, but there is not like, <laughs> the horse is a dick, also, 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 also yeah. the dog is like, I want a to dick. kill myself sometimes, because he's like, uh, complete idiot, <laughs> <laughs> now, we, we love the dog, we love the, uh, horse, we love the features, we love the game. We, we love you. We do. We do. <laughs> when it comes to creating a new feature, they are always usually created in the heads of the designers who have pretty much no technical border in their minds as well. So where do you draw, draw the lines? How, how strong is your power? Where can you say, no guys, that's impossible? Where, when can they say, but you have to make it possible and so on? Because I think that's a very interesting <laughs> mm -hmm. fight. You have to fight there. Um, this, that's true, but I, I don't really think... Uh, I, I think that the uh, vibe is really collaborative and that's what I really love about working here. So uh, I, I definitely do think of it as a fight, but it's not really a fight between ourselves. It's really a problem being very difficult because the creative designers want the game to be very cool, which we also do definitely want. Mm -hmm. But uh, we also need it, we, we also actually need to do it. So uh, then there's all these different limitations that come into play. We need uh, to be uh, able to do it in time. We need uh, to uh, implement it in a way that will actually be really fast because we, we really are pressed for um, performance in our game 
And there's all these factors that we need to consider. We need it to be compatible with all the other things in the game, and we maybe don't even know if it's something, if it, uh, if the other things are going to be in the game at that point. So there, it, it's it's a lot of uh, plates to uh, juggle. But uh, what we try to do is sort of iterate. I think is is the way that we do. So we uh, try to uh, have a rough draft of uh, all the features uh, in the first place and then try to call which of those are going to make it into the final game so that uh, we can uh, count on them and then we try to uh, iterate and uh, sort of make the design more and more accurate and figure out uh, all the uh, details before we go into implementation. It's always or very often sounds like they are at the end of the food chain. However, how strong is the impact of QA when it comes to the point where design said, let's have this feature, script does whatever they were able to do, and see what's the power you have in the end of the production process? Yeah, uh, it really depends on the uh, uh, on the face of the of the uh, of the development of the feature, of course. But uh, we are there from the beginning, you know. What I actually wanted to like go to is like you know like you said you are we are iterating a lot uh, uh, on these features and uh, that's the problem with the testing actually you know uh, mm. you are not able to see the features the final form of the features uh, until the Release. last possible <laughs> time yeah mostly because uh, until the first patch every everyone can hear me if I do this or something and it's like breaking the gameplay somebody said yeah definitely that Mm -hmm. wasn't the intention at the beginning with the idea. So they are changing things Listen, even at the late stages, okay. you know? Oh boy, I but can... But even if that's not too much of the change, you oh, yeah. still need to like work with it a lot. So think about it, you, you are testing uh, the whole early stages of testing are like thrown out. Even the later stages are thrown out, and you still need to test everything, you know. Yeah, that's so that's the thing which makes our job much harder, but there is not other way to, mm. to, to do it. While I was out in the fields to present the game, they meanwhile changed a decision, like a major decision. At some event I was saying, yes, and Kingdom Come will definitely feature this and that because we believe that's a must-have, blah, blah, blah. Then I came back and they asked me, why did you say that? I said, because that's what you told me before before uh -huh. I left. Yeah, but yesterday we decided we will not do this anymore. I said, ah, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Xylandra is asking, what's your favorite feature that you love but had to do cut eventually and why? Well, there is not many features that really had to be that were planned per se and then had like minor things like fishing and cooking but no major game changing something that was planned and then had mm. to be completely cut off. So I, I really like how uh, people sort of react to not necessarily just you but the things they see in the world. So I think that's a step that we tried to make that I was more excited about, the most excited about. Very often NPCs in the world are sort of just going through their routines and it's getting very obvious and what we try to do with that is that we want them to be more reactive to things that they see so but we want them to react to each other as well so when they uh, pass each other on the street they they, they wave and say hello and i i would guess um, that it is a very minor feature but it's one that i really like a lot is that when you throw things on the ground people actually notice them and you know uh joe likes what's that and come over, uh, walk over think. and uh, put the things uh, in their pocket and then they actually do have them. I, I like this aspect and this particular detail of it. But I also see, you know, the, 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 the huge, huge space for improvement that, that we can do and that, you know... BAM! I love the game over. You dead. Game over. <laughs> I love the game o o o o over, o over screen. <laughs> well, it's called hardcore mode. So yeah, that's pretty hardcore. Yes, of course. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You uh, just wasted three hours of game time. Yeah. Shoot. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> well, now you can at least play, you know, a different way. Doesn't doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, guys, we, we came to the end of our part anyway. <laughs> Your time is over, guys. And the next <laughs> waiting is Petr Pekas and 
the mm. cinematic experience in an open world. As I, as so I, it's like a closing speech. Well, all right. I guess uh, thanks for celebrating with us, guys. Yeah, we're, we're happy to uh, have you on the stream and to have you with us on uh, this amazing uh, journey with the game. So uh, is this your birthday as well? It's our uh, anniversary together. So thanks for celebrating us and, and being here together. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Big thank you to all of I actually was able to, to read the chat and I want to say big thanks to everyone that was praising the, the devs, the programmers, the QA, the scripters, all of the mm -hmm. people that work on the game. Thanks Ivy, I saw a few messages. That was, that, that, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, happy anniversary to all that are playing for two years and love the game still. Yeah. Okay. 